Hi everybody, um, welcome to uh, another table talk. Actually, this is more of just kind of me uh, brainstorming. Um, I, I recently uh, posted a uh, flight video with this uh, modified RC Powers SU-30 version 4. Um, and in that um, uh, video I discussed, you know, what some of my thoughts that have been churning around here for a couple of days about, uh, you know, really getting serious about doing a uh, a serious uh, speed build uh, since I actually have some 4S batteries uh, on the way which I'll talk about uh, here shortly. So I also recently shot a video um, where I discussed uh, many of my thoughts and experiences on, on uh, selecting a plane and other things to, uh, to consider when you're, you know, you're really trying to build a, a super fast plane. So I guess it's time to uh, kind of put my money where my mouth is. So in my last two flight videos, I've, I've flown um, this, which is, a, um, you know, I kind of built it as a winter beater plane, and I actually will probably just keep it over the summer and maybe keep flying it, but definitely save it for, uh, for next winter. Uh, and I've also been flying my 24-inch uh, um, wingspan MiG-35V, which is also uh, a very fast plane. But, um, you know, looking at them, I don't have my MiG-35 here, but... Um, the uh, the frontal profile here, the nose, you, you know, it's almost like a like a spear almost here on the uh, SU-30, and I think that uh, um, downsizing it even more, it's it's certainly narrower uh, this way than the uh, MiG-35B. So I think by downsizing this even more, this has a 25 and a half inch uh, wingspan. Uh, so I've already got a set of plans. I, I uh, got them printed off uh, at my print shop, and um, so it actually turned out, uh, I, I thought I'd made the calculations, but you know, you never know sometimes. Uh, the wingspan will be just a shade over 24 and a half inches. So it's still, it's going to be an inch uh, smaller than it is now, but I'm still going to have lots of room in the prop slot, you know, to play around with six inch props. Uh, because, you know, it's not just going to be a plane that, you know, I'm always just going to go out and fly on 4S and light my hair on fire. Uh, you know, there may be times where I just, you know, want to fly it around on 3S with a, you know, a 6-inch uh, prop. Um, so I'm going for, in my, in my video I discussed, uh, I'm going for, obviously, very, very, very top end speed, but also functional speed so that, you know, I can fly. Uh, I'm not uh, ordering a whole bunch of 4S batteries, so, uh, you know, when I'm, when I'm feeling my oats and I want to really... Uh, uh, kick the tires and light the fires, you know, I'll drop the 4S in there and, uh, and really have some fun. So anyway, so that's uh, the first thing we're going to do. We're going to shorten the wingspan here by uh, at least an inch. Uh, the other thing I've done is I've done some, some measuring. I printed off um, this. I know it's going to be very, very hard for you to see, but this is essentially, uh, you know, a, a, a front-on, uh, top view, side view of uh, the real SU-30 that I uh, printed off off uh, Wikipedia. So I ran some, some calculations, you know, the ratio uh, on the real plane between the uh, wingspan and the elevon span back here. Now I think that when I built this, I did trim the elevons down quite a bit. RC Powers designed this as a, a, a hovering park jet, um, and it has very, very large, um, uh, I know it's going to be very hard for you to see, I won't even bother showing it to you, but it has very, very large elevons. So I, I, I did scale these down a little bit, but they're still actually, um, essentially the span from tip to tip here of the elevons should be about two thirds what the wingspan is, uh, based on some calculations that I made. So the, these ones are actually still uh, in total about two centimeters, close to an inch actually, um, too wide. So what I've done is I, I went and found um, the uh, plans from the NAMC uh, SU-27, which I helped uh, test. And uh, so I printed off uh, an Elevon here. I downsized it, printed off an Elevon here, which, uh, you know, I'll just, of course, this is a slightly bigger plane. But so it's going to have, uh, you know, you can see, I mean, here's the, here's the tip out here. So it's going to have a much uh, a lower drag profile in the back, as well as quite a bit less uh, surface area uh, overall. So hopefully that's going to uh, reduce uh, some drag, kind of give it more of a scale look too, uh, which is always cool. The SU-27 SU, uh, family has you know, such a cool uh, 
profile. So that's one thing that's going to reduce, uh, you know, some some significant drag back here um, in the back end. Now I'm not going to do too much with these uh, vertical stabilizers or these uh, fins here on the bottom, uh, ventral fins. Uh, these I think are critical to uh, the stability, which um, you know one of the things that I've talked about in my. Uh, my video about the need for speed is that you know you I, you want a plane that's going to go fast, but you don't want it to be an absolute uh, uh, you know uh, uh, flea on a flea on a on a hot tin roof uh, you know ju juking and jiving all over the sky. So I'm going to leave those uh, on there because they do they you know they do create a little bit of drag. I may as I as I get along with the build, I may you know I may trim them down a little bit, but I think that they're really essential to. Uh, to uh, yaw stability, um, which you know, which is important. But we'll we'll see how uh, fast we get it going. So for build materials, I'm also going to uh, I, this this is built with uh, Dollar Tree foam. The wing plate uh, and the fuselage are built with Dollar Tree foam. Now I left the paper on uh, behind the uh, the trailing edge of the KF. Uh, so I'm going to build the the new one the same way. But these are uh, these vertical stabilizers are built with um, model plane foam, or yeah, model plane foam. So model plane foam is still fairly uh, uh, flexible compared to Depron. So I'm going to use Depron for the nacelles and vertical stabilizers because I should be able to build those. And again, it's going to be even a little bit smaller. I should should not have to put um, any reinforcement. In the vertical stabilizers, like I did here, so that's going to help shave, uh, you know, a couple of grams off. And as well, you know, based on what I've been learning as I've been building with Dollar Tree foam, I have this uh, piece of carbon fiber back here across the back plate, and I'm not going to put that in my um, in my next build because I don't really need that. These, uh, especially with these, are going to be made out of Depron. This. These uh, vertical stabilizers here, they really help the lock or the and uh, uh, lower part of the um, nacelles. They really tend to lock in this back plate, so I shouldn't need to worry too much there about torsional twist. And because I'm also, um, you know, reducing the size of the uh, elevon uh, considerably, I'm not hopefully not going to be putting a lot of torsion, you know, twisting the back end of it too much in uh, turns and rolls. So that's uh, a couple of ways um, that we're going to save. Save some weight. So Depron model plane, or uh, Depron and uh, Dollar Tree foam. Again, the Dollar Tree foam will have the paper removed on the fuselage. Uh, KF4 airfoils. Uh, I'll also be going again. Again, I'm you know I want this to be a plane that uh, is uh, is you know fast, but also if I just want to go out there and, and rip around and have some great fun doing aerobatics. I still will build it uh, with uh, all six servos. But again, I'm going to use a five gram. Uh, nylon gear servos for my rudders and my uh, ailerons and 9 gram uh, for my um, elevons. So uh, we'll see we'll see how that goes. Um, I probably I think you know thinking about it because the prop slot is still quite large. Um, I think my prop slot let me just measure it here real quickly um, off of my plans. So my prop slot is going to be um, yeah my prop slot is still going to be about six and a half inches wide uh, so I probably could have done, gone down a little bit smaller but what got me a little bit worried is that because this is so narrow right in here uh, you know I didn't want getting my battery in and out of here I didn't want to be uh, doing any damage to that so we'll uh, we'll see how that goes so yeah the, the reinforcement I'll still go with uh, you know, with a couple of spars here, uh, just to make sure the wing is good and stiff, because you know we're going to be, uh, you know, pull, coming out of some of those high-speed runs and things like that. We're going to be, or you know, pulling up in the vertical uh, uh, at full throttle. We're going to be pulling some pretty significant G's with this thing, so I want the wing to be uh, nice and strong. Um, I probably will paint it. You know, this one again because I built it as a beater plane. I just, you know, threw a quick. Uh, Magic marker paint scheme on it, so uh, to keep it super light. But I will, I will probably paint the new one. Um, you know, but again, I'll use all the techniques I know to keep that light. Uh, some other things I, I've talked about. So I didn't really. I just kind of gave this a, a 
a reasonably good sanding job. But what I will do on the uh, on the second one is I will fill, you know, I'll sand it down first, and then I'll use uh, um, probably some uh, super lightweight spackle to really really smoothen these out. There's also in this uh, along here on the canopy. There's also a bit of a, a funny sort of gap here. So might, what I might do there is rather than putting spackle here, is just along this canopy, depending on how big that gap is, is I'll probably just cut some strips of scrap foam, uh, glue those in, and then uh, sand that down nice and smooth so that you know we have as uh, smooth a profile. So compared to my uh, you know to my build, uh, my beginner's build, my um, MiG-29 version one build that I that I did uh, a while ago. Uh, you know, I'll be using all the lightest weight glues. I seem to have misplaced my, um, yeah, sorry. I, I, I will, uh, I'm not gonna, probably not going to do a full video series on this build. Uh, I will probably do a, a blog, um, some, you know, some blog updates. But I'll be using, you know, very lightweight uh, glue. It's uh, essentially foam cure by Bob Smith Industries. Um, yeah, so there's, uh, there's going to be the build. So we'll, uh, We'll see how that goes. I'm still, uh, uh, you know, one of the toughest things. I'm still trying to find a paint scheme for it. But anyway, uh, lots of options. I just got to keep uh, keep looking around. Uh, I'll have a link to a website down below that I use for inspiration for a lot of my uh, MIG and uh, Sukhoi uh, paint schemes. Okay, so there we go. So there's the, the airframe, uh, the servos, uh, you know, kind of my ideas. So it's, it is going to be, uh, I think it ended up being maybe 3 or 4% smaller than, uh, than what this is going to be. Uh, you know, and we're going to try and reduce some more drag in the back end here by, by getting, scaling these, uh, these rather large uh, elevons down. Um, so, uh, and I, you know, I think we're still going to have plenty of uh, pitch authority. And because we'll have ailerons, we're still going to be able to have lots of uh, roll authority for, uh, for turns and stuff like that. Okay, so there's, uh, there's that. I'll just put this down here out of the way. So for power systems, uh, I've, I've already uh, you know, been having some conversations with my, uh, with my power system guy, RC Plane Pirate. Uh, so I've got, I've got a few different ideas. Uh, like I said, I've ordered some 4S batteries. Uh, they're, they're, I, I was concerned about weight, so I just went with some... Um, uh, Tattoo R-Line 1550 uh, 4S 75C, so lots of uh, lots of amp capacity there, um, so that shouldn't be uh, uh, too much of a problem. Let me uh, let me just actually quickly do the math here. Grab my grab my dollar store calculator. So uh, it should be the battery should be able to deliver 1.55 times 75. Yeah, so the battery should be able to deliver 116 amps, uh, and I think they're also, uh, I can't remember, I'll put a link to the ones that I bought down below. Um, I only got a couple of them because they're, they're not cheap batteries, but uh, I've, done, I've watched some reviews, I think, on Joshua Bardwell's website, and they're super high quality, so uh, they're not going to be getting a ton of use, but I, you know, I want, want to be able to get the maximum power and, uh, and have them last a while. So I've also ordered, uh, you know, again after talking to RC Plane Pirate, I've also ordered some um, uh, five-inch props, uh, so, uh, some 5045 uh, bullnose. I'll have links to all the props that I've ordered uh, down below uh, to experiment with. Uh, I watched his uh, his um, video. This is the Emax uh, 2306 2750 which I think is a, one of the first motors that I'll experiment with. It's not quite as, uh, it's not quite as powerful as the GEP RC or this uh, Sunny Sky Edge, but I think it's, it's rated at 58 amps, and I think it's going to be able to, you know, because uh, initially till I get my 5-inch uh, props, uh, I'm going to probably be experimenting using the um, uh, TGS EMP KMP uh, 6x3 prop. Uh, so we'll see how that goes because right now this is pulling about uh, 36 amps. So theoretically, uh, again here, just because it's early on a Saturday morning and I haven't had enough coffee, so 36 amps. So uh, theoretically, let's add another 25%. So we're looking at probably between around 45 amps, uh, theoretically, maybe if we just a 25% increase. But again, we'll you know we'll be doing uh, we'll be doing the testing there. 
So, excuse me here, I just grab my uh, my own jet fuel. So uh, anyway, so yeah, so I think this motor will be able to handle that without too much problem. So this will be the first one that we experiment until my uh, I, until my five inch props show up. Uh, I've also ordered, um, you know, I'm going to be experimenting with uh, the Turnigy AE45 and maybe also uh, the Hobby Wing, depending on, you know, once I get some bench testing done, depending on what the amp draw looks like on the bench. Uh, I probably have mentioned it. I did a I did a review uh, already on this Turnigy AE45, and it it does really for a lot of the motors. It really does give them a, just a tiny bit extra performance. But I don't think that it's you know when it really comes to pushing it hard, um, you know, because I've run it with motors. Uh, I ran it with this Sunny Sky Edge with a six x four APC gas prop, which was pulling 45 amps on the bench. And when I tested it on the field, it was it was getting a bit uh, a bit toasty. So <clears throat> depending on how we go, even if uh, um, you know it might be a little less power with this uh, Plat Hobby Wing Platinum Pro 40 amp. This has a burst rating of 60 amps. Uh, the other thing is is that I would say that you know they, they rate this at 40 amps, and I would say that this is a definitely a 40 amp speed controller. Uh, I'm you know I'm really really impressed with the Turnigy E45, but I'm not 100% sure that it is actually a 45 amp speed controller, but again, uh, that, that's why we test and we'll find those things out. Uh, if worse comes to worse, I suppose, I, I do have a Turnigy Plush uh, 60 amp, you know, if things go really crazy. I have ordered uh, a Turnigy AE uh, 65, similar to the one that RC Plane Pirate uses in his, uh, in his bench test videos. Uh, but if I can help it, I, I won't use this uh, unless I absolutely need to because it is pretty darn heavy. Uh, it's about, uh, I think, 30, 28, 28 grams heavier than these. Uh, now, I know the AE65 is going to be heavier as well, but I think it's not quite, uh, it's maybe only about 20 grams heavier. But uh, anyway, we'll, we'll see what we can do. Um, the other candidate uh, that I'm thinking is going to be a good one once I get some 5-inch props is this Sunny Sky Edge and... Uh, also the GEP RC, uh, those are both uh, very, very powerful motors. Right now the GEP RC is probably the, well it is, the, the fastest, most powerful that I've been running on uh, 3S with the 6x3 uh, EMP prop. Uh, the reason that I mention this um, Sunny Sky is that a lot of the testing that I've done at the field, um, you know, when I've been running it hard, uh, you know, uh, with the 6x4 APC gas, and then with the 6x3 uh, EMP is the motor has run like really really cool uh, quite a bit cooler than others so I'm not sure 100% sure actually what the amp rating is on this uh, Sunny Sky I, I think I might have seen something where it's about 45 uh, amps if I can if I can find that I'll either have a, uh, a caption here on the video or I'll just put a link to it down below but I think that this is going to be a good candidate and this is uh, I think right now, after the GEP RC uh, on 3S, the Sunny Sky Edge is the most powerful, and then probably either the Emacs or the uh, Hawk Sky 2306. But the beauty of this is that this uh, Emacs runs more efficiently than the others, so it might come down to those, you know, one of those uh, trade-offs where. To get the efficiency, I may need to lose, uh, you know, I may need to sacrifice a little bit of power on 4S, but, uh, you know, I think it's still going to be pretty scary <laughs> because, you know, this thing uh, on the bench is uh, 1,200 grams uh, on 3S. So, uh, you know, on, on uh, 4S, I just can't imagine, uh, you know, the thrust. But uh, anyway, we'll see. It's going to be probably going to be pretty scary. So anyway, those uh, those are some of my ideas on the um, uh, on the power system that I'm going to start off with. Uh, like I said, I'm I'm buying the uh, four cell batteries from a local vendor, so they're probably going to be here next week, uh, early next week. So I should be able to start uh, some bench and field testing uh, with those. Uh, you know, initially with this uh, Emacs with the six by three. See how we make out there, and then uh, <clears throat> you know once the uh, all the five inch props that I've ordered uh, from both Hobby King and Banggood. Once those show up, uh, we'll get some more testing, but you know, those are probably gonna be uh, a month away, but, but that's fine. I'm, you know, I, it's gonna take me, uh, now that sort of spring, summer is here, 
it's going to take me a while to, to build uh, my speedy uh, SU-30, but I have other planes, uh, you know, my small, uh, th that plane that I just showed you, the SU-30, my small MiG, and uh, even my big MiG, uh, bigger MiG, the red MiG, to, uh, to do some testing on uh, before all those things show up. So there we go, folks. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm excited to get going, uh, you know, get these plans uh, sorted out, cut out some foam. Uh, I mean, obviously, just like uh, this one, uh, you know, I'm not going to be building it with the canards. Um, you know, I'm going to keep it uh, as, uh, as sleek as possible, um, <clears throat> both in the construction materials and then my, uh, my finishing. So uh, as I said, I, I, may, I may do some video updates, depending on how things go, but uh, I will probably do... Uh, uh, some blog posts uh, as, as I go along uh, as well and if need be I will shoot a quick video to update uh, for those folks that just follow me on uh, YouTube so they can go to the to the blog and uh, see what's going on there so yeah so it's exciting uh, should uh, <laughs> should be pretty should, be, should get the old adrenaline flowing because uh, you know seeing as how fast I've been getting these things going already on 3S uh, you know taking it on uh, putting it on a 4S uh, it's re really going to uh, uh, take it to a whole new level and uh, you know hopefully I won't uh, take too many of my heartbeats away scaring myself uh, with how fast it's going to be but uh, yeah so uh, building to come, testing, more testing to come uh, you know it should be a, a busy summer I know in a previous video I talked that I will be uh, you know I'm going to build a, a MiG-30, another MiG-35B to replace the uh, gray one that I crashed uh, earlier in this week uh, so that's kind of been pushed to the right uh, for now uh, because I'm, I really want to get this uh, speed build um, uh, done and uh, see, see how we make out, kind of put my money where my mouth is. So thanks very much for watching folks. Uh, blue skies, calm winds to everyone. As I said, uh, please check out down below. I'll have uh, links to, um, uh, to these motors uh, and the props that I'm going to try uh, based on recommendations from RC Plane Pirates. So, uh, yeah, so uh, park jet noise, the other sound of freedom, baby, and we're gonna be making <laughs> we're gonna be making some once we get a 4S battery uh, in some of these babies and get really, really get ripping. So uh, take care, everyone. <laughs>